Welcome to today's Assemble Tech Corner. My name is Sadra Kasai and I'm a product manager at Assemble. In today's session, we'll cover how to use Assemble Fine Cloud to create a slab flatness report. Slab flatness is one of the common reports that general contractors uh, need to create after concrete pours. Uh, today, using Assemble Insight Pro with Point Clouds, there is a fast and easy way to generate slab flatness report, and we'll show you how. To load, manage, and publish your Point Cloud data and reports, please install the latest version of Assemble BCE. In today's session, we are going to go through a sample project to get her a step by step and generate a slab flatness report. In the first dialog box, you need to sign in to your company assemble address with your username and password. Uh, after logging in, you'll have the list of all the projects you have published. And within each project, you'll have the list of all the models within that project. I'm going to download the architectural model from Revit and also the mechanical model from AutoCAD. You can select different layer and hide them if they are not necessary. In the next step, you can simply import your point cloud files from either project manager, import tool, or just simply drag and drop your point cloud files into the project. I'm going to drag and drop my point cloud file into the main screen. Choose absolute location if your point cloud file does have a coordinate inside and choose drop location if your point cloud does not have any coordinate inside. Since this data is already registered to the CAD file, I'm going to use absolute location. The software automatically load each scan center and report the number of points inside each. After importing your point cloud data, you can create boundary box around the model to look inside the project or remove the section of the file that you don't want to see. Clicking on the boundary box tool, I can adjust the area that I need to work with. And at the end, I need to activate this boundary box. So I'm clicking on boundary box icon. Now I'm removing the ceiling to be able to see the inside of the project. You can also change your view from orthographic to perspective. This project is from inside a high school central plant and was scanned with ferro scanner with RGB value. You can always change the view mode to walking mode and go inside each project and walk around the site as well. Let's go back to the overall view and save this model view for a later use. To do that, we need to click on the save icon and give this new layer a name. I'm going to call this layer uh, no ceiling and click on enter. And next step, I'm going to create a new boundary box uh, just surrounding the floor or the slab and save that model view as well. After the final adjustment, on the right hand side, click on save. Give this layer a proper name and hit enter to save the name. Also use this point to create a completely separate layer just for the floor. You can do that so by going to optimize layer on the point cloud management tool and create an optimized node based on this model view. After the calculation, a new object tree will be added to the list called op optimized data. At this point, we are only looking at the optimized data and I can remove my boundary box and have an overview of the project with my floor layer activated. Okay, let me fold the raw scan data and uh, rename the optimized layer and give it a name like slab. That's done. 
Great, now to bring back the original scan data, I can simply click on that layer. I click on the scan center that I need to bring back. Right click and then click on reload. This will bring back all my raw points into the project. If you need to go back to any saved model view, just simply click on those layer, right click and set the model view. Now let's organize our object list. I can double click on each layer and give it a new name. Uh, I want to rename the MEP model and give it a proper name. Also, uh, I will rename the architectural model name. And I can also group those CAD model into the same group as well. So select those three, right click and click on group under. Now I'll give the new group a name called CAD. So underneath the CAD layer, I have two model which one is MAP and the other one is architectural and you can hide them either individually or the whole group. Now we are ready to create deviation report. I'm limiting my view to the floor. Get into deviation report and at this point I need to set the tolerance and maximum deviation for this specific floor. The next step would be selecting the layer that you need to run the calculation on top and then click on the calculate button. This will automatically uh, create a heat map on top of the floor that shows the deviation. You can check the legend on the right hand side. We can also turn off the model view and have a better feel of the project and take a look at the heat map. If there is a specific point that you're interested to see the deviation on top of, you can always uh, use the heat map, uh, use the deviation marker and place it on top of those point of interest. I'm going to do a couple of these points and publish an Excel report after this. This looks good. The third icon in deviation tool will create comb plots as a methodology solution to show deviation as well. You have different setting uh, to set your preferences on how you want to show those cones or line and publish them along with your report as well. Next, I'm creating an Excel <coughs> document that shows each point on top of the point cloud data and also the model geometry and the deviation between those two. The Excel report is connected to the desktop software and by clicking on each point it will automatically create a pivot point on top of that a specific point and show you the point location. So as an example I click on the second point deviation and you see the marker is highlighted. I need to move if you have double the screen uh, on your machine that will be helpful to select those points and look at the specific location inside the project. To attach the same Excel report to this project, if you have a PDF document, Excel sheet as like this report or a picture that you want to attach to this project, you can activate the tag tool and drag and drop those files as well into the screen. This will create a new marker and a new tag that allows the user, the cloud users, to download those files and use them locally on their system. You can also use the template marker to communicate any issues on this project with your coworker. As an example, I'm going to give a title to this marker and give, name it Central Plants one and also I'll add a comment uh, fix needed and save this information by hitting enter as the last step we need to publish this report in content sharing tool I'm selecting a quality and hit on create icon this will create a preview of the data and the sample report that is about to get published inside a sample 
now let's take a look at the browser so anything that we are seeing in this is in this section is all the data inside the browser this is a preview of the data uh, the marker uh, the Excel that you can click on and download the download the information uh, and the rest of the markers which are the deviation uh, marker that I created on top of specific points I'm happy with the sample and now I can uh, give this report a name I want to call this deviation or slab flatness and then save this name and then publish inside assemble In the object list layer, under published documents, there is a new layer called deviation, which shows that this report have been published inside Assemble. Moving on to the same project inside Assemble <coughs> web interface, I'm loading the project geometry. And on the top right hand side of the screen, there is a point cloud icon uh, that includes all the reports that have been published inside this project. Let's take a look at the whole model, both plain cloud and also the CAD geometry on top. As this file on the local computer is around 10 gigabytes worth of point cloud file that we optimize to the point that we are able to load all those information uh, in less than five seconds. Uh, this will be very handy and very helpful to share this information, not only the uh, point clouds, but also the reporting that comes out of the point cloud data as well. This is a sample uh, data for deviation and the heat map and the markers on top of that report as well. As you notice, using a symbol inside Pro with point cloud, we were able to create a slab flatness report with multiple sharing options in less than 12 minutes. Thanks again for joining us today. If you have any questions, please email us at support at assemblesystems.com. I hope you have enjoyed this session and see you soon in another Assemble Tech Corner.